slavery and its impact on the diet and health of Caribbean people. Did you know that the diet our African ancestors were made to eat on the plantations of the Americas continues to affect us today? It does, and very negatively too. In this video, I'll go over what the diet was like before colonization and the slave trade in Western Africa, where the majority of our ancestors came from, and then discuss the diet of the plantation era. Prior to colonization and the advent of the transatlantic slave trade, the West African diet was primarily based on fruits such as the kai apple, which is native to Southern Africa, but can be found throughout Western Africa and is a good source of vitamin C and potassium. Another common fruit, the monkey orange, is also high in vitamin C and all parts of the plant were traditionally used for medicinal purposes. Grains like millet were a staple. In fact, the diet was heavily plant-based with such dishes as a goosey, for example, being made from the seeds of the watermelon and all parts of certain plants being used from the roots to the leaves. For example, cowpea legumes as well as the leaves might be used in stews. And other popular vegetables included a type of celosia and the familiar okra. Nuts also featured heavily in the pre-colonial diet with many dishes being made from the various kinds of nuts. Fish was often eaten by those on the coast or near rivers, but meat was rare and reserved for special occasions. The diet was sparse on salt, sugar and dairy, and even alcohol, then often in the form of palm wine or fermented honey, was usually only consumed on special occasions. In the Americas, forced to work from sunup to sundown six days a week, the diet of Africans and their descendants changed, but not completely. Some foods remained staples, but what changed was their importance or significance relative to other foods. Slave ships off the African coast often stocked upon yams to help feed the captives during the Middle Passage. And the ackee is among those plants brought to the Caribbean by a slave ship captain. Some of these were foods already known to the Africans. <clears throat> on the plantations, many plantation owners, but not all, allocated land on which the enslaved could grow food. As you'd expect, this was usually on mountainous or rocky soil at some distance from the slave village. These two slides present rather idealized images of plantation life, but both of them show that there were no provision grounds attached to the cottages. Those would have been further away if they existed. In addition, although you can see cows grazing in the Jamaica image, the enslaved were usually not allowed to own cattle, sheep, or goats. Some plantation owners in the region allowed the ownership of chickens or pigs, but that was rare. In the first century or so of slavery, the enslaved were made to work six days a week. Sunday was given over for rest or for them to tend to their provision grounds. In the late 1800s, many were also allowed Saturdays off, but not during harvest time. They worked from sunup to sundown. In order to fuel the constant labor, starchy carbohydrates such as edos, yam, and cassava became the dominant nutrients, while vegetables, leafy vegetables, grains, and fruit declined in importance. Hundreds died of malnutrition and related illnesses throughout the region every month. Planters supplemented what the enslaved grew with rations of cornmeal, rice, and salted meat and salted cod or other salted fish, usually sent down to the Caribbean from New England. So instead of the fresh fish some Africans were accustomed to, they were given fish doused in salt. We still eat this saltfish today. Saltfish cakes, ackee and saltfish, and saltfish sauce are all the legacy of this practice. Ackee and saltfish is now the national dish of Jamaica, and saltfish is also part of the national dish of St. Kitts and Nevis. Parts of animals unwanted by the planters, such as tripe, oxtail, and pig's tails, were passed on to the enslaved. Usually these were the fattiest or grittiest parts of the animal, certainly the parts that did not contain the greatest nutrition. 
Some of these now form parts of dishes beloved in several countries, such as the national dish of Grenada, oil down, and the pea soup of the Virgin Islands, both of which feature pigtails. This diet, high in starches and high in salt, has contributed to the rates of hypertension, diabetes, and obesity that we see in the region today. More on this follows in part two.